Hi, everybody. This is Alan Fine. I'm here with Terry Dale, president and CEO of the United States Tour Operators Association, which we know for short as USTOA. We are going to talk about that survey that came out of the annual conference and marketplace and more on Insider Travel Report. Terry, thanks for, for talking to us. How are you and where are you? I'm actually in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm doing great. I've seen you. You do your little one reeler comedies from Brooklyn, New York. We've all seen them. We've, we've shown them on Insider Travel Report. Sometimes yes, at the bottom of the bridge. <laughs> right, right. So let's talk about the status of USTOA, USTOA members. How are they doing? You know, uh, it's an extraordinarily tough time, obviously. And, uh, but all in all, they're doing as well as could be expected. You know, I think, Alan, one of the interesting stats from this survey was that 50% of our members will have conducted programs by the end of 2020. Now, when you think of it, 50% are already out there conducting tours. Now, granted, they're domestic, because obviously that's what we had to pivot to, right. which is perfectly fine. But, you know, we look at so many different segments of the travel industry who haven't been able to start generating some business. So I think that um, that's a good, healthy signal. And then when we talk about, you know, optimism for 2021, two thirds are optimistic or cautiously optimistic about the resumption of business next year. So I think all in all, while it's challenging, um, you know, we're making the best of what we have to work with. Well, it's interesting to note that these numbers and that optimism that you just quoted is coming, those numbers are coming before the announcement of not one, not two, but three vaccines. I, I'm glad you mentioned that. We wrapped this survey up the end of October. So that's just a snapshot in time. And when you think of what has happened between the end of October and today with a new administration, three potential vaccines with an extraordinarily high effectiveness rate. So there are a lot of signs to give us increased hope. And, and have you been able to retain membership? Have we unfortunately lost some? We, Alan, we had 100% of our active members, which are our tour operator members, renew for 2020. So we're very thankful for that. And our associate membership is also very strong. So um, things are good, good on the good. membership front, yes. So now how's the lobbying been going for more government relief? Well, frustrating yes. at the moment. Frustrating at the moment. Uh, and, and also the question was asked this morning and it's a good one. You know, what's your, what are your thoughts on a new administration? Yeah, yeah. So first, um, as far as seeing another stimulus package um, before the end of this year, we're not real optimistic. It, it doesn't seem like um, the moon and stars are going to align, uh, even though President-elect Biden has come out and said, you really need to you know, get something done. Um, but I don't know, our signs and our information don't paint a, a likely scenario. We hope we're wrong, but that's kind of what we're seeing. Now, as far as this next administration, um, you know, we are optimistic uh, about a Biden administration, and, and there are several reasons. Um, he um, and President Obama uh, supported the funding of Brand USA several times, and in this current administration, they removed Brand USA funding entirely a couple of times. So we expect that he understands the promoting of our country. Uh, to get inbound travelers here. Um, we also think that the kind of hospitality that our country is known for um, and the welcome uh, and saying, you know, we want you to come will be a more genuine, warm uh, kind of invitation that we're historically known for. And then, you know, President-elect Biden has also supported the visa waiver program over the past many decades. 
So while this won't be, you know, top of list uh, in the short term, but we think long term we could see that program expanding because he's he's been pretty supportive of it in the past. So all in all, we we have hope and optimism about this next administration. That's great. Now, um, programs, programs. You always are, are outreaching your your members. Do you have any new programs that are helping them through the crisis that we can talk about? Well, a lot is um, around education and right. providing information and intelligence. Um, obviously, these surveys, of which we've done a dozen uh, during this pandemic time, um, that shared intelligence within um, our community is extremely valuable for them as they are looking uh, at forecasting for the short and long term. So, you know, and when you, we talk about programming, you know, we were hoping this year to do our first sustainability uh, summit in Norway. Obviously, that couldn't happen. So we're hoping that 2021 will allow us to do that. So we've had an education series um, with our thought leader, Malcolm Preston from PwC. Uh, so he's done webinars. He'll speak uh, during our virtual conference and then uh, through the first quarter of next year. And then hopefully sometime, you know, mid to later in the year, we can get together in Norway. So because we recognize that sustainability um, is really critical uh, for the whole travel industry as we evolve and, you know, get through this pandemic. I found uh, some of the numbers really interesting. Like, for example, there is the, the number 6% of your members will not begin to do anything until travel's normal again. <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering if they had some kind of second, re second form of income or some, some money put aside because most of us are trying to start now with limited capacity. Yeah, you know, the, the, the majority are going to work side by side with COVID in a safe and responsible way to, you know, keep the customer and consumer engaged and hopefully <laughs> traveling. So it's a pretty small percentage who said that they would wait until they could operate at full capacity. The um, other thing that I, th I found interesting, let's talk a little bit about the um, expectations of uh, uh, travel and, and when the bookings are as they started to grow throughout uh, the different quarters of 21. So, you know, it looks like third quarter 2021 um, has the highest percentage of bookings I should qualify new bookings. Um, so these aren't business moved from They're 2020. Not right, yeah, right. so these are new bu new business booked. Um, third quarter uh, is the strongest. But second quarter, um, we also see, you know, roughly two thirds have new bookings in the second quarter. And I think it's interesting when you look at parts of the, the world as far as where our members expect to be traveling, Second quarter, and in particular, April, you know, 50% expect to be back in Europe in April, 60% Canada, 25% Mexico. But who knows that, you know, who knows? But um, I, I think, you know, mid-year next year, uh, we're hopeful. And obviously, was, yeah. I was going to say what was interesting to me, and this is how trained we've become. I'm looking at the bar graph that you produced and then I see this dip, uh, fourth quarter of 21, and then first quarter 22. And I'm like, is that another wave? And I go, no, 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 that's just booking naturally. No one's booked that far yet, but that's right. how we're trained. Right, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so now music to our ears was this fact that um, there were stats on the travel advisor and yeah. the travel advisor's impact. Can we, let's address that for a little bit, please. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So 88% of our members uh, expect the travel advisor to be part of their sales force. And uh, that's, that's really encouraging. Three-fourths expect uh, sales to be actually booked through the travel advisor. So 88% want to work with the travel advisor. Three-fourths say the bookings will come through the travel advisor. Um, however you want to slice it, uh, we need that partnership. They are crucial to our success and uh, we, we can't get through this transition without them. So I think that bore out in this, in this survey. How did Italy turn out this time in terms of top destinations? Did it get knocked off its perch? 
no, Alan, Alan, Alan. <laughs> um, no, Italy came in at number one again. Uh, number two was Ireland. And then we had a three-way tie uh, for third with Germany, Greece, and the UK. And, you know, the, Europe has dominated for well over a decade since we've been doing these surveys. I'm sure it's gone further than that, but at least during the lifetime of these surveys. And I think 14 of the top 20 destinations, international destinations, were from Europe. So clearly, uh, they're kind of our bread and butter. But, uh, you know, we, we still go to all seven continents, but uh, a lot uh, is Europe. And there was no surprise on the wide open spaces domestically. Who were the top winners? Yeah, uh, Alaska, California, Arizona, Wyoming. Yep, wide open spaces. Right. So <laughs> there was a two part thing. What will influence consumer travel decisions in 2021? And then the negatives, what are the potential threats to travel in 2021? Well, you know, it's hard not to think, you know, the pandemic and your well-being, safety and health, you know, that's what's top of mind. Clearly also um, the varying regulations around quarantining and, you know, if I travel and then all of a sudden, there's a change in regulation, whether my home country or the country that I'm in, you know, that's top of mind as well. So, I, you know, none of this is surprising. Um, I think, you know, the work that we have done, as well as the whole travel industry in setting up protocols and guidelines, uh, we collaborated with the European Tour Operator Association and the Canadian Association of Tour Operators in creating what we call tour care. And the, the purpose was to provide a framework for our collective members to use as a base to build an even more robust program to then give that consumer the confidence they need that we are going to do everything we can to make sure that we're providing them with a safe and healthy experience. But I always like to stress, and I think we all have to do this, it's a shared responsibility. We have to stress to our customers we can do everything possible from our end, but they also have a responsibility. They have to be careful. They have to um, follow the guidance and the protocols that our members and the whole industry are putting out there to help protect them. But if they don't, then the best laid plans um, are like having no plans. We was only as strong as, as your weakest link. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. But what's interesting, though, the, the, the negatives, uh, sustainability and over-tourism, you know, they sort of dropped. They sort of got pushed aside. And, and the irony there, of course, is that places started to rebound. Fish started to come into areas we didn't expect. Um, it, it, I, I assume that's going to flip. Yes, absolutely. Um, and, and, you know, we, we have seen the, the positive... Um, impact that um, management, tourism management uh, is having. And I think that's how we want to approach it. It's like, we want to be good citizens to all of the communities uh, around this globe uh, and help them manage and get the economic impact to those areas and communities that need it the most. And let's be smarter about how we schedule uh, let's take a look more seriously at off season or the particular days of the week. So we, we have a responsibility and we take it seriously to make sure that we minimize our footprint and maximize our economic impact and give it, get it to the right um, communities uh, around the globe. I just applaud your good work. We've got a lot of work to do, Alan, <laughs> but but, but this industry, you. this industry is positive, and we will we will get through this. I, I know. If I, we keep uh, look, our whole reason, Betra, our our mission is to give the information to the travel advisors that they need, so that they can get to the Absolutely. other side. And you're Absolutely. doing that with us, so we thank you for that support too. Thank you All very right, much. Well, so you know that we go out to, we used to go out to over 100,000 travel advisors, but we clean our database, not like some. 
Right. So we're almost 100,000 now. And what should they know right at this time, speaking to them, what would you like them to know? You know, I think the consumer today needs to hear from the tra travel advisor, honesty, transparency, stay engaged with your customer base, because I think your role is more critical today than it ever has been. I think the, the consumer out there is gonna recognize that when they're ready to travel, they wanna have the confidence and the way they get the confidence is through the travel advisor. So I, I think the value proposition is only going to continue to skyrocket, but you've, you've gotta, we all have to be very transparent and honest. And in doing so, we'll all, um, we'll all make it through and be just fine. Perfect. Terry, thank you very much. You're on Thanks, your schedule. Alan. You're the best. Thank you. You're, you're better. Happy, thanks, happy Thanksgiving. Right, happy Thanksgiving to you too. And James says hi. All right. Take care. Bye.